Hi there folks, welcome to Dunsey's Guitar World. Welcome to today's incredibly exciting video. So today I will be unboxing two guitars which are currently residing in that box there. So about three months ago I made a video where I said I had about six or seven hundred pounds budget and I was looking at some guitars in the UK and then I thought what I'll do is I'll see if I can get two guitars from Japan for the same price as I could get something like a, a new Epiphone. So those two guitars are in that box. So there's only one thing to do. Let's see what's in the box. Not that box. That's my cat's house. This box here. So let's get this box open, see what's inside. Plenty of packaging. This is from Zen Market, there's always very good packaging. I did not pay for extra enhanced packaging, so it will be interesting to see. Let's investigate further. Plenty of bubble wrap. So there are two guitars in there. Kind of this bubble wrap. So a smaller bubble wrap, larger bubble wrap. boxes here. Keep the neck safe. It's thick cardboard as well. How thick that cardboard is. Two guitars and above polished iron on the bottom to make sure they stay safe. So let's remove them from the box. Now in case anyone is wondering how much cardboard one of those boxes generates, you know, just in case, I'm not going to say get rid of the evidence, but if you need to get rid of stuff quickly before someone comes home, that is the amount of cardboard you need to get rid of in a pile. And luckily, it all fits rather neatly into a reusable Tesco bag. Now, you can use any equivalent bag from another supermarket. It just so happens that it's a Tesco bag. And all the packaging goes in, what's this? A little bag <laughs> goes in a cut price supermarket bag. So here are the two guitars. Still in some bubble wrap, which I think will fit in here. So let's remove the outer packaging. So here they are. Let's open the first one. Let's get this bubble wrap off. The weighty. A weighty guitar, this one. I'll fast forward this part because it always makes a terrible noise on my microphone. I think we've got strings. Strings or something. Oh, what do you think it is? Can you tell at this point? It's exciting, this is like Christmas. It takes a while. Try 
trying to keep the surprise here. there. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh look. Strings. Hybrid slinkies. Cool. So, are you ready for guitar number one? Dun, dun, dun. There's the body. Look at the size of that trim system. A bolt on neck. Can't believe the size of this trim system. So it is focus on that. A Morales. A Morales Mosrite copy from the late 1960s. Whoa, look how chunky those P90 pickups are. I'm not focused on that. Morales. Morse right copy. From the late 1960s. Cheaper tuners on it, which I think would have been the tuners of most guitars in Japan in the late 60s. So, eh. Uh, Whoa, it's a chunky beast. Nice feel and neck shaped. Is it in tune? That's not in tune. I don't have perfect pitch, but I don't think that's in tune. But it has arrived. It has arrived safely. A few dings and stuff, but I'll have a closer look in a little while. That's guitar number one. Your morale is. Morsite copy made in Japan, I think 1967, 1968. Oh, one of the knobs is missing. I'll need to check it's not in the packaging. I don't remember that in the auction, but I'll have a quick look. So let's move on to guitar number two. Guitar number two here in some bubble wrap. Plenty of this bubble wrap, eh? So again, let's fast forward this. You will notice they are not in hard cases. There are no hard cases on these guitars, which I guess kept the weight down. Doesn't protect the guitar as much, but as we saw in the unboxing, the packaging from Zen Market, Super thick cardboard, tons of bubble wrap as well. Peeling an onion. Layer two. Oh, I think this might be in a gig bag. It's a gig bag. It's in a gig bag. Careful my fingers here. Ugh. A heavy one this as well. Feels like it's maybe made of metal. So, in a gig bag. What do you always do? Check in the pocket. Is it a vintage clone? Well, what is it actually? Oh, what? No way! No way! This wasn't uh, this wasn't mentioned in the auction. What's that? Zoom 505. And a made in Japan guitar lead. It's my bonus material right there. So what is the guitar? Where is the zip? More bubble wrap inside here as well. Oh, even more. Oh, 
That's it. God, I'm getting all the bonuses today. Look. Little one yen. Focus on that, please. A yen as well. Ho, ho, ho. Sticker Central. And I get a strap. There's a strap on it as well. Thin neck. Oh, this does feel like it's metal, which is a bonus for me. Now, in my previous video looking at these guitars, I was speculating as to whether this is metal or wood. It does feel like it's metal. And it is one of these. A Tokai. Tokai. Taubo. I don't know if that's focusing on the logo. A Tokai Blazing Fire. Taubo. Cool stickers, man. There's like literally stickers everywhere. Stickers on the fretboard and everything. Touchstone pictures. The nightmare before Christmas. Somebody was previous owner was clearly obsessed with the nightmare before Christmas. So um do we think this one's in tune? So I quick go on E chord. It's more in tune than the other one. So I think what we'll do is I'll take both of these guitars through to my workshop, which is basically my kitchen work surface uh, when my wife's not in. And we'll have a brief look at them. We'll see if we can get them up to pitch without breaking any strings. Uh, plug them in. And the final part will be have they arrived in one piece and do the work. And maybe a brief speculation about what I need to do to get these up and running. So I'll just do this on my phone. Quick look at the Morales. Look at the size of that trim. And the height. The height of P90 pickups. So yes, a blooming control knob missing. A trim system. These small frets, only dust everywhere. Seems to work well, it moves. A zero fret and a metal nut. I mean, Rust Morales. Let's flip it over. Well, maybe not a good idea with that trim. I'll just hold up. Look at that heavy beast, this. There it is. To look at this six bolt held on by six bolts. Now, I read as well there may be two inside the neck pocket coming down as well. So it's uh, certainly held on securely. Laminate neck. Long headstock and budget tuners. Plenty of patina on them. Dust. So that's oh, guitar. It is heavy, man. That's guitar number one. Oh. Guitar number one. The Morales. So let's look at guitar number two. The official or the unofficial nightmare before Christmas guitar. The first thing I noticed was, uh, look at this. This is all the way up. So much at the top string is actually ringing on that pole piece. It's got a kind of eastern sound. It's like a sitar. You play some Beatles on it. Okay, the stickers. They are literally everywhere. Bigger frets on this, with a hint of a uh, green kind of oxidisation. 
It's a nice looking fretboard though. The Tokai Blazing Fire the stickers there as well. And on the fretboard. God. And there, look. The Tokai Taubo underneath that. Thank goodness we have stickers on top of the control knobs as well. So this looks like some sort of paint, but I think that'll scratch you off. Three single coil pickups. I think we can safely flip this one over. Oh, more stickers out. More sticker vicar. Not so stickery on the back though. I like that. A mere four bolts holding this neck on. Maple neck, by the looks of it. Stickers. So, um, I'll try and get these up to pitch. The Morales only has five strings and they look ancient. But we'll see if we can get them both up to pitch, sum a couple of chords. And then we'll know if the electrics are working. So this particular purchase is very much a game in two halves. We have the opposite ends of the spectrum. The Tokai has sounds. Not great sounds, I think there's something up with the switch. Definitely needs some kind of contact cleaner going on in there. And this needs, uh, this needs looped at. And uh, I broke a string. We'll tune it up. Because I had to, <laughs> had to uh, move this saddle up a bit, it was crazy, it was genuinely just banging on the top of that pole piece. So, yes, I would say this one is reasonably successful. I don't think too much will be required electronically or engineering wise. It seems to be okay, it'll need a, need a lot of cleaning, it'll need a lot of sticker removal, I'll have some goo gone. So I need to get rid of all these, but it does seem, it does seem to work. Um, it almost plays all right as well. So yes, so that'll be what, this one will be getting like a good clean, a deep clean, wire brush and dental, maybe a power wash, and get this up and running, check this out, see what's going on with that. Um, maybe some contact cleaner will sort out the, the issue, because when I moved to the neck pickup, it was very quiet, but all in all, maybe a, as these things go, maybe a 7 out of 10, you know, very rarely you get a 10 out of 10 when you're buying things from Japan at the kind of budget that I have. So that's guitar number one. It's okay. Guitar number two, the Morales. First of all, it's a beast of a guitar. It's huge. Very weighty as well. But, sadly, there are no sounds from this at all. Plug the lead in. Nothing, no, no signal, not even like a, just a weak signal, just no signal at all. So I don't know what is going on with this. I'm just, I'm so impressed with this bridge. It's just a, in Scotland we have a word called muckle, which means just like really big and chunky. It's a muckle bridge. Um, it actually plays okay. Um, we're five strings and these are the rustiest strings ever. But they... Uh, Um, but I think, you know, even just a clean with new strings on it, I think that this would, this would play okay. You wouldn't get any sound. So, uh, yes, some serious investigation required to get this one up and running. But um, I have never owned a Mosrite. I'm a big fan of the Ramones. I've never owned a Mosrite. My mate Mike has had a few original ones and he says the necks are like really, really slim. But, but this is okay. This is chunky enough. To, uh, to do the old fame downstrokes. So, but yeah, I think just with new strings on it, a good clean, I think this would play okay, but like I say, I won't get any sound. So, so yes, yeah, a bit of work required on both guitars. I will film the process and post videos as we're going through, and hopefully within maybe a month or so, 
both of these guitars will be playing well, sounding good, maybe even use them at a gig. Who knows? As ever, folks, it's a privilege and a pleasure bringing content on Dunsey's Guitar World. Just for now.